The West more or less gave up on the idea that criminality can be successfully civilized out of the people. They gave up on the idea of refining the morals and ethics of the population. And why not? Why wouldn't they do that? There's more money in them being criminals. There's more money in the people being immoral. The criminal justice system in the United States generates more money than the GDP of 133 different countries. You know, private for-profit prisons make hundreds of millions of dollars a year. Local, state, and federal governments rake in about $50 billion a year just in fines and penalties, criminal fines and penalties. And of course, it's not just that. Promoting sexual immorality is an even bigger business. You know that treating STD, sexually transmitted diseases, is a $40 billion market globally with the Western countries, the U.S. and Europe, uh, particularly and specifically, leading the demand. And obviously, it's a growing market. It's expected to grow. That's not even mentioning the money that they're making treating HIV for years on end and for so-called gender reassignment treatment that goes on for years, if not for a lifetime. I mean, the pornography business in America is worth $15 billion. And alcohol is a market that's worth more than a trillion dollars. You know, there's roughly 2 million arrests in the United States every year for DUIs. And each DUI is estimated to be worth up to $20,000 with that money being spread across multiple sectors from, you know, the financial penalties in the criminal justice system to lawyers, to insurance companies, and so on. Not to mention the medical bills for all the people who get injured and for the uh, funeral expenses, like more than 10,000 people every year who die in uh, drunk driving crashes. So yeah, of course, Western society is not interested in their people being civilized, being moral having some kind of moral discipline and self-control. Well, I would guess that the U.S. economy would probably be reduced by at least 20 to 30 percent if the people were not indoctrinated to commit crimes and sins and immorality. That's why they not only don't try to refine them, but actually brainwash people into thinking that all of those things, all of those sins and all of those crimes are actually just fun and good and it makes them have interesting and exciting lives. You know, it makes them think that it's them being free and independent and individualistic and all that. It makes them think that they're in a movie. When actually they're all just being sold into hell. Hell on earth and hell in the hereafter. But they don't want you to believe. They don't want you to believe in hell in the hereafter. They don't want you to believe in the judgment day. They don't want you to believe in accountability before God. That's why their societies are crime-ridden and why ours aren't. Because our belief system does not prioritize profit over morality. Our belief system prioritizes saving people from sin and wrongdoing and saving them from hell on earth and hell in the hereafter. We want people to be good and to lead good lives. We want the people to treat sins like the crimes they are so that they'll be afraid of committing them, not just afraid of the punishment if they get caught. I mean, in Islam, you have to understand, in Islam, we understand we believe that if you do commit a crime and you do suffer the punishment for that crime, if you get the HUD punishment for that crime, then you're cleared of it in the hereafter. And if you think that the HUD punishments are severe, well, we're more afraid of the punishment in the next life than we are uh, afraid of the punishments in this life. And this is what helps to keep us on the right track.